Hello everyone, this is the CircuitPython Weekly for August 9th, 2021. Uh, this is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. Uh, I'm Scott and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. Uh, CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support them and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to the URL adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with the U.S. holiday. If the meeting time has changed, we'll notify you via Discord. If you wish to be notified about changes to the meeting, we can add you to the at CircuitPythonesis Discord role. That's the one that we'll mention. Uh, and there is also a calendar available that we try to keep updated if you'd like to subscribe to that. Uh, this meeting is recorded. We record the audio of the voice channel and the video of the text channel. Uh, if you would rather not have your voice recorded, you are still welcome to participate. The video of this meeting will be posted on the Adafruit YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the audio is released as a podcast. If you find this podcast is not available on your favorite podcast service, let us know. Uh, there is a notes doc to accompany the meeting and recording. If you wish to participate but can't make it to the meeting, you can leave hug reports and status updates for us in the document, and we'll read them off during the meeting. The notes document also contains timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to view only the parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 60 to 90 minutes, so this gives you the option to skip around. A link to the notes document is posted in the hashtag CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord every week. Check the pinned messages to find the latest notes doc. Uh, this meeting is held in five parts. The first is community news. This is a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a preview of the Mi Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. The second part is the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. This is a statistical overview of the entire project. And it's a chance to look at the project by the numbers separate from what we're all up to. The third part is hug reports. Hug reports is the opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing. Uh, taking the time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. Uh, this is a counter to bug reports. Um, this, the fourth is fourth part is status updates. Status updates is an opportunity to sync up with what we've been up to. Take a couple of minutes and talk about what you've been doing in the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be up to over the next week until the next meeting. Uh, the fifth part and final part is in the weeds. Uh, in the weeds is an opportunity for more long form discussions. These discussions can come out of status updates or be something you've identified ahead of time as too long for status updates. And that covers how the meeting will go. And with that, I will switch over to the note stock and start with community news. So community news is a preview of the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Uh, and first up, we have a, an article about the Raspberry Pi rolls out new documentation online. Until recently, documentation for the non-Pico Raspberry Pi boards was on GitHub and Git in GitHub Markdown language. As of Monday, uh, today, a new documentation site, raspberrypi.org slash documentation, has been built and deployed directly from the repository, which is github.com slash raspberrypi slash documentation. Using GitHub Actions, uh, when someone pushes to the master branch, uh, however, people will will mostly be working out of the develop branch in the repository, which is the default branch when you take a fresh checkout, and also the branch you should target for your pull requests. Uh, and there's more information on the Raspberry Pi blog. Next up, uh, there's now a, a new Notable Women Business Owners 2021. Uh, with its list of notable women business owners, Cranes recognizes those who have forged their career paths and then turned powered New York City's economy. Women-owned companies represent more than 40% of all registered businesses in the city and generate more than $70 billion in revenue annually. Lamar Freed, founder and engineer at Adafruit Industries, was selected among 63 recognized women among 66, or sorry, 600,000 women-owned businesses in New York. Uh, and the link there to Crane's New York business. Uh, 
Next up is a CircuitPython Day 2021 f recap. CircuitPython Day 2021 was held Friday, August 6th, with events leading up to the big day. Thanks to all the who contributed to make this year a rousing success, here's a list of events you can watch on YouTube covering the discussions. Uh, first is Show and Tell from Wednesday. Next is Tim, aka Foamy Guys, CircuitPython Day broadcast. And then a Jeff, Dan, and Katney discuss CircuitPython. Uh, Lady Ada did a CircuitPython board tour, and I did a CircuitPython deep dive. That's the roundup. And uh, missing on that is the Reddit AMA as well. Um, we should get that on there. I will add that later. Next up, uh, the f chip shortage challenges maker manufacturers. Uh, two resources discuss the effects of the chip shortage. Uh, first, chip shortage challenges maker manufacturers, Adafruit, SparkFun, and other wellsprings of amateur innovation face a new normal. This is from IEEE Spectrum. And then there's also a YouTube video called Why There Are Now So Many Shortage. Uh, in parentheses, it's not COVID. And thanks to Foamy Guy for dropping the notes in there. And thank you to Jeff for the link to the AMA as well. Next up, uh, Python and Visual Studio Code, the August 2021 release. The August 2021 release of the Python extension. Um, <laughs> uh, for Visual Studio Code is now available. This includes a revamped Jupyter Notebooks experience brought by the Jupyter extension, now out of preview. And it an improved way of sorting Python interpreters in the selection list. There's a link to the Microsoft Python dev blog. Next up is the state of Python in 2021. It's a review of many things happening in Python this year. It includes several sections, and this is from program. Matica? Ipsum? I think that's what it is. Uh, and the sections are the ecosystem, machine learning and scientif scientific computing, getting Python, learning Python, Guido Van Rossum, and more. Uh, next up, we have uh, the Real Python Podcast with Nina Zakarenko. Um, the Real Python Podcast hosts Pythonista Nina Zakarenko. Topic is start using a debugger with your Python code. And there's a link there. Thanks to Foamy Guy again for putting that in. And that is it for the community news for this week. Uh, if you would like to know more or get uh, subscribed to it, uh, the CircuitPython weekly newsletter is a CircuitPython community run newsletter emailed every Tuesday. The complete archives are available at adafruitdaily.com slash category slash CircuitPython. It highlights the latest Python and hardware related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, mm -hmm. Python, and MicroPython developments. Uh, to contribute your own news or project, edit next week's draft on GitHub. Go to uh, github.com slash adafruit slash CircuitPython dash weekly dash newsletter. Check out the uh, drafts page there and submit a, submit a pull request with the changes. You may also tag a tweet with hashtag CircuitPython on Twitter or email cpnews at adafruit.com. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I butchered the name of that website. Okay, uh, let's move on to the second section of the day, uh, which is the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. Uh, this is a statistical overview of the health of the project uh, meant to ground us in um, the, the, the numbers before we, we talk about how we feel about how things are going. So uh, first up, the no overall numbers. Uh, overall, we had 23 pull requests merged from 14 different authors. So thank you to all of our authors. Um, some new folks that I don't recognize is R. Pavlik, uh, R. Dorisonod. Uh, so thank you to those new authors. We had seven reviewers, so thank you to our reviewers. As always, uh, we couldn't have as many authors as we have without all the reviewers, so thank you, everyone. Issues-wise, uh, we had 24 closed issues by nine people and 15 opened by 13 people, so we are net down nine, which is great. Um, and 
as we can see by the number of people involved, we're, uh, we are growing. We're starting to hit the double digits, which is exciting. All right. Um, now for the core. Um, we had 15 pull requests merged uh, from 11 different authors. So thank you to all of our authors on the core. Uh, we had four reviewers. So thank you again to those reviewers. Uh, we have 13 open pull requests, but the o oldest open is now 16 days. Um, the one that was previously open over 100 days was a board one, and we've since had, and I think merged, uh, a newer version of that, but we had to close the old one. So um, thanks to folks for doing that. And uh, it's super exciting to see our oldest pull request at only 16 days old. Uh, that's, that's really awesome. Um, issues wise in the core, we have 16 closed issues by five people and six opened by five people. So we are net down 10, which is awesome for a total of 433 open issues. The way that we track, uh, and keep track of our issues to make sure that we're at least triaging them is by using milestones. We have two issues currently not assigned to milestone. These are the ones that we need to triage. Um, and then we have 29 open issues for the 700 milestone, which is our, our goal uh, to fix things for the stable release. So um, that is kind of the where all a lot of the action is happening right now is on the 700 milestone. And uh, with that overall, I uh, expect to see another pre-release this week. And uh, it may be an alpha or a beta, depending on whether we've kind of wrapped up all of the uh, API changes. Uh, but please keep testing it. And if you find things that you think are urgent enough or um, important enough to do for 7.0, please mark them as 7.0 or, or suggest that we do that. Otherwise, uh, we'll keep pushing to get 7.0 out the door. Um, it's got a lot of really good stuff, so it's, uh, it's time. And with that, um, let me kick it over to Katni for the libraries. Thanks, hey, Scott. So uh, this applies to all of the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, which is everything that begins with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, as well as the community bundle, uh, the Adafruit CircuitPython bundle, and our um, cookie cutter. Uh, so a few extra fun ones in there as well. Um, so across all of that, we had eight pull requests merged this week by five different authors and six different reviewers. Um, we had, uh, that leaves us with 45 open pull requests. We had eight issues closed by six people and eight open by seven people. So we are net even with 332 open issues. If you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information and more, all of the open pull requests, all of the open issues, um, and some library infrastructure issues. Uh, you can search the issues by label. Um, so if, uh, we, we need to get better with curating our good first issues, but um, you can check out bug or enhancement if you're looking for something a little more complicated. Um, but find something that interests you and leave a comment on it and let us know you'd like to work on it. In terms of reviewing, uh, take a look at the PRs. If you have the hardware, test it. If you don't, you can check it for syntax or spelling or you know style type things and make suggestions, leave a comment. And once you're comfortable with that, we can talk about leveling you up to joining our review team. Uh, in there is a guide on contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub, so don't let that intimidate you. Uh, and we're always available to answer questions. We want you to be able to contribute in the way that works for you. So in terms of library updates in the last seven days, we've had one new library. It's the IS31FL3741. Can't believe I made it through that. <laughs> and we have a few updated libraries that I will not read off. Overall, we're continuing to see work on various libraries and new libraries being added to both the Adafruit and community bundles. And I want to say an uh, early thank you to everyone who's been handling the breaking changes fixes, especially Foamy Guy and Lee Samurai Propre. That's what I've got. Awesome. Thank you, Katni. And next up, uh, let's go to Melissa for a Blinka update. Hello. So Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython and uh, Raspberry Pi and other single board computers. And this uh, week, we didn't have much activity. We had zero pull requests merged. Uh, there are currently two open, two open pull requests. And there were zero cl closed issues by zero people and one open by one person. Uh, there are currently 60 open issues. 
There were 9,844 Pi Wheels downloads in the last month, and we are still currently supporting 75 boards. And that's it. Awesome. Thank you, Melissa. All right, and that's it for the State of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. Next up, we have Hug Reports. Uh, Hug Reports is a chance for us to say thank you to the folks in our community who are doing awesome things. Um, this is done as a round robin, so I will start and then go down the list of folks in the notes stock. Um, if you're just listening in and not participating, then uh, just don't list yourself in the notes doc. Um, but if you do want to participate, feel free to drop your notes in the notes doc. Um, if you're not able to make the meeting, uh, if you're listening to this after the fact and would like to participate in Hug Reports, uh, you can go to the CircuitPython dev channel, check the pin messages, and add your notes to the notes doc, and I'll read them off for you. So let's get started. Um, first up from me uh, is a Hug Reports DCD for taking time codes during my stream. Uh, thanks to Keith the EE for hosting our Reddit AMA uh, last week. It was really fun. A uh, hug report to Katni, Dan, and Jeff for the CircuitPython Day stream. I, I watched it and enjoyed listening to you all answer questions and show off your projects. Very cool. And then uh, lastly, a hug report to Dave P for testing my SAMD21 ticks change. Um, timekeeping on the 21 is really hard. And so uh, Dave's done some really good work, and I was happy to have Dave's eyes on the changes that I made. I'll have to keep looking at that. And with that, let me circle around and read off Anne's notes. So Anne says, Hug report, or thanks to all who made CircuitPython Day and CircuitPython Week so wonderful, especially Foamy Guy, Katni, Dan, Jepler, and myself. Next up from, uh, do we want to go to Charles? Instead of reading it off. Charles isn't jumping in, so I'll say Charles has a group hug. And next up, we'll go to Dan. Hello. Uh, uh, thank you, Jeff and Katni. We did a stream together on CircuitPython Day. That was a lot of fun. Demonstrating things and just answering questions worked out very well. Very nice experience. Um, thanks to Keith the E, who set up a really excellent uh, Ask Me Anything for CircuitPython and MicroPython on Reddit on the uh, Python subreddit. Uh, there were some extremely thoughtful answers, especially by Jimmo, um, about aspects of MicroPython and CircuitPython and the differences and uh, various features and stuff. I, it's well worth reading. And um, thanks to Nathan uh, by 3 g who, for their first PR, which was to add board.led to Grand Central, which was something that I had meant to do in this massive uh, cleanup of board.led and still missed. OK, thank you. Thanks, Dan. All right, next up, I have notes from Dave P. Dave says, uh, Hug reports Dan H for putting me in touch with a cousin who contacted him for Macropad help. I had not had contact with him for many years. And next up is Foamy Guy. All right, thanks, Scott. Um, first up, hug report for Neurodoc for uh, starting up a repository to hold al alternative keyboard layouts. Uh, so that's been a, a project that's been in the works for a bit. Neurodoc got the, the ball rolling pretty well on that. To Anne uh, and anybody else that was involved in organizing the festivities for Circuit Python Day. Uh, to all the folks that streamed, uh, Katni, Jeff, Dan, Lady Ada, and you, Scott. Uh, Appreciated all of those uh, streams. To Warrior of Wire uh, for helping me out quite a bit on some core code, uh, pointing me to some examples that turned out to be super helpful. And uh, likewise to Jeff and Dan uh, who helped me out as well and uh, pointed me some to some great concepts that I need to study up on. And lastly to community member Gary Z uh, who made a, a really neat arc gauge widget for display IO. Uh, so that's been really neat to play with. And that's it for me. Thank you. Thanks, Foley Guy. All right, next up is Jepler. Hello, I need to dig my notes out because I was reading uh, Neradoc's keyboard layout repo, and I'm happy <laughs> to see that uh, arrive. So hug report to them. Uh, also to Katni and Dan for the YouTube live broadcast on Friday. It's not quite the same as hanging out with friends, but it's a lot like hanging out with friends. So uh, that was nice. And the community questions 
uh, made it a lot more fun too. And thanks to everyone else who participated in CircuitPython Day, whether that was as a broadcaster or just as a listener. Um, another thanks to Naradoc and then Foamy Guy for quick feedback on something I implemented on the weekend, CircUp install dash dash auto, which I'll mention down in my status update. Awesome. Thanks, Jeff. All right, next up is Jerry. Hi. Um, yeah, thanks to Jeff for uh, the uh, OB2640 webcam guide. Um, had a lot of fun with that. And uh, the QR code reader module, also fun to play with. And uh, yeah, hugged everybody involved in the CircuitPython day streams. Thanks. Thanks, Jerry. All right, next up is Katni. Hey, so uh, let's see. I have a lot of uh, important hug reports, so I will not say first and foremost today. Mm -hmm. um, so first up, anyway, uh, Mr. Certainly, uh, for tracking the questions in the various chats outside of Discord on our Friday live stream so that we could focus on streaming and only have to track Discord to answer questions. This was unbelievably helpful and greatly appreciated. Thank you. To Keith the EE for organizing the CircuitPython Day CircuitPython MicroPython Reddit AMA. That was excellent. Um, thanks to Jeff and Dan for an excellent stream on CircuitPython Day. Uh, and thanks to everyone who participated in CircuitPython Day. Um, to echo Jeff, who said everybody who streamed and everybody who didn't. Um, our stream ended up going for a solid two hours, and over an hour of that was just answering questions from folks who were asking questions all over the web. So that was that was great. Um, a hug report to Warrior of Wire and Foamy Guy for working on fixing vector I.O. issues. To Jeff for helping me automate renaming some files in Git, even though we went through a broken version and a couple of iterations before getting it right, it's still better than how I was going to do it. And finally, A. Pendley on GitHub for their first contribution to a CircuitPython library. Uh, a new example for the Macropad library is what they submitted, and they stuck through getting through CI failures, getting things set up locally to handle the failures, and persisted through getting it passing. So I wanted to give them a nice, uh, hug report for that and look forward to seeing more of their contributions in the future. And that's what I've got. Awesome. Thank you, Katni. All right. Next up is Keith E. Hi. I wanted to say a uh, first hug uh, to you, Scott, for helping organize the Ask Me Anything thread that we had on Reddit. Uh, it's thanks to you that I was able to get an in touch with everyone and bring in MicroPython alongside CircuitPython for the AMA. And that made it really special to me. Um, thanks to Katni, Philip, Jeff, and Foamy Guy for helping with announcements throughout the week and throughout their streams on Friday. Uh, Dan, because as soon as he saw a question way before the scheduled AMA was ready to start, he jumped in and helped someone uh, and answered their question. Uh, Scott and Jim from MicroPython, because their answers were super thorough and they built off each other's answers, so I got a really neat perspective of the MicroPython approach and the CircuitPython approach. And Neradoc, uh, they jumped in on a question uh, they had a fantastic answer to. And uh, to the community as a whole and to everyone involved in CircuitPython Day for making it a really cool experience. Thank you. Thanks, Keith. All right, next up is Melissa. Hello, I'm going to start off with giving a hug to Dan for the great guide on customizing CircuitPython. Uh, everyone who participated in CircuitPython Day and group hugged everyone else. Awesome, thanks, Melissa. Next up, we have notes from Neradoc, who says, hug report to Jeffler, <laughs> Jeffler. <laughs> Jeffler and Microdev for the traceback module. Hug report to Jepler for the circuit pi circup install dash dash auto. <laughs> Jeff says he answers to Jepler. <laughs> Hug report to Jimmo, uh, myself, Dan, and everyone else who participated in the Reddit AMA. And a group hug for the community and all those I forgot since I don't do that very often. Thanks, Nerdoc. All right, uh, next up is uh, status updates. Status updates is done just in a similar way as around Robin. But this time we're talking about uh, a little bit about what we've been working on in the past week and what we're doing in the coming week. It's a way for us to stay in sync and uh, give tips or tricks to other people if they're working on stuff that we may have worked on in the past. Uh, so I will start and we'll go around just like we just did. So first for me, um, 
been working on more fixes. I finally got my GDB happy again, thanks to help from Dan. Um, and the problem was actually the linker, so the linker got fixed, and that's been making things happier, which has been so, so nice to be able to be in my GDB happy place again. Um, so uh, I'm working on a fix for the reload while doing pulse in. Uh, I talked a bit about that earlier working with Dave, so I'm going to take a look at the DHT this week and see if I can't figure out why we're losing accuracy still. Uh, I'm, and then I'm going to look at more issues to fix to get 7.0 out the door. So we still have 29 at least. So, uh, And Dan pointed me to a similar one with the SAMD thing. So I'll take a look at that as well. Um, so yeah, lots of bug fixes this week for me. Uh, I did PR last week the Adafruit Beely UUIDs to the Nordic Numbers database, uh, which I believe powers uh, the NRF Connect app in terms of like having friendlier names for the UUIDs that it sees. So that should be helpful in the longer run. And then um, some other folks are still working on the Beely workflow apps, and uh, I will be checking with them and uh, making sure that we're making progress. And if they find any bugs on the device side, I'll make sure and tackle those as well. But um, I am not a strong client side person, so I will have to kind of rely on those folks uh, to push those forward. So that's where I'm at, doing a lot of odds and ends. Uh, next up, we have notes from Warrior of Wire, who says uh, tons of fixes, simplifications, ergonomic features, and perf performance improvements in Vector I/O, uh, and no more vector shape. So, uh, trying to get some some API changes in for uh, seven as well. And circling around, we have notes from Ann who says, uh, please keep sending news, projects, and tips to cpnews at adafruit.com. Um, the summer, as we've noticed with these meetings being a lot quicker, tend to be a lot uh, lot less busy because folks are busy and, and taking vacation and stuff. So that applies to the, Ooh, sorry. That applies to the newsletter as well. Uh, so if you know of cool projects that people are doing with Python, MicroPython, CircuitPython, please email cpnews at adafruit.com and we'll get those out the, out the door in the newsletter and, and highlight the cool things that people are doing. Uh, and with that, let's go to Dan for his status update. Okay. Um, mostly I've been working on audio debugging, which is... Uh, I've spent several weeks on, but I keep getting narrowing it down and finding more clues. The latest thing I found is that for some reason, the sample rate of the audio that I'm trying to play uh, makes a big difference, even though it shouldn't, uh, because it's not the sample rate only affects a few calculations. So I have to look at that in more detail. What I'm trying to fix is crackling, and sometimes play goes stops completely on something like the macro pad where other things are happening uh, with memory access, especially with DMA, like the display or other things happening at the same time that are significant background tasks. It's not necessarily that the other thing is DMA, just that it's happening. But it seems to be more common when the other thing is DMA. Um, and I've done a bunch of instrumentation, uh, like flipping pins when certain things happened, and I can look at that output on a CLEA and then look at the timing of things because I'm looking at things that are pretty timing critical. And if I put in, I put in print statements, but only I tend to put them in when the play is complete. I mean, I might put them in the middle, but it tends to affect uh, the outcome of what I'm trying to debug mm -hmm. just to make sure that, you know, like, are, two, are both channels busy at the same time? Why is that happening? That shouldn't happen. That kind of thing. Okay. That's right. it for now. Thanks for persisting on that, Dan. All right. Uh, next up is Foamy Guy. All right. Uh, last week, I worked on... Uh, we wrapped up the remaining max size and on-disk bitmap updates in the Learn Guides uh, with a bunch of help from Le Samurai Porpe. Uh, so thank you, uh, Late Hug Report there. Um, I worked on some enhancements for the grid layout. Uh, one to look up the contents by their XY cell position instead of having to know the index that they were added, like the order they were added in. Uh, and another one to add divider lines between the cells. 
Um, and I worked on helping to uh, make the gauge widget that Gary Z created updatable so that it can uh, redraw itself when a new progress gets set instead of um, you know making a new one and adding it to the group again. Um, for this week, I'm going to start looking into the PWM out and the other few uh, remaining uh, breaking change fixes, so things that will need to get changed for CircuitPython 7. Uh, I'm going to work on adapting the uh, an older dial widget to use the new Vectorio API. I think that's the only place where uh, Vectorio is in use so far. Um, so we're going to update that to work with the new API. I'm going to hopefully finish up the divider line functionality in grid layout and get a PR submitted for it. I'm going to try to uh, clean up the, some code in the core that I've been working on uh, and get a PR submitted for that. It's to make a, a boundary fill function that will kind of do like a paint paint bucket style fill that's going to help speed up drawing some different things. And then lastly, I'm going to try out uh, some other ideas I have to try to make that uh, gauge um, draw a little bit faster and also get a, uh, a repo set up for it with cookie cutter. Uh, so that's what I got going on this week. Thank you. Thanks, Foamy Guy. All right, next up is Jepler. Got to find that unmute button. Um, <laughs> So last week, the main thing was a new guide on the Learn system about uploading camera images to Adafruit IO. So um, check that out. And always happy to have feedback from Jerry, um, which I didn't mention in Hug Reports um, about that. I implemented a new feature in CircUp. You can now say, or well, once it's released and merged, you'll be able to say CircUp install dash dash auto, and it will do the same thing that Bundlefly does, which is open up your code.py, send it to find import, which will list out the libraries you need. So kind of a, a one step, hopefully, to get the files you need onto your device. Um, I implemented a module called QRIO for scanning QR codes. And it was really easy thanks to a C library that I could use called Quirk. And I pull requested some random bug fixes into CircuitPython MIDI. Um, I saw some activity there over the weekend a person's um, CI was failing, but not due to their bug, due to some other stuff. And I thought, well, I can do a little tidying up here. Uh, so anyway, this week, the focus is to create a guide on scanning QR codes. And one will do it just simple. Uh, we'll have at least two examples. One will do it simple just into the REPL, and the other will uh, upload the QR code to uh, Adafruit IO, since we're doing Adafruit IO right now. And it seems like based on memory problems that Jerry is going to mention, um, probably you'll need to stick with the um, ESP32 modules with PSRAM for doing QR codes. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, anyway, and then plenty of miscellaneous. You can stalk me on GitHub and look at my GitHub activity if you want to know more about what I've been up to, which is exactly how I make these lists. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Thanks, Jeff. All right, next up is Jerry. Gotta hit the unmute once. Um, yeah, so yes, yeah, so I played around with the uh, the QR code reader stuff. That was a lot of fun, and um, and it worked really well on the on the Kaluga. And so I got the brilliant idea. I'll oh, I'll just port this over to the, to a Pico, and um, yeah, it, it ran out of RAM pretty <laughs> severely. Mm -hmm. so I've forgotten about the fact that the that the uh, Rover module has that big PS RAM. So um, I guess we'll not to stick with that. But um, and then I thought what I'd like to do though, and and I don't think there's any reason why this shouldn't work, is to is to port the um, or convert the uh, webcam demo over to the Se Seola uh, rover because it'd be a nice smaller package than than the big Kaluga, um, you know, and, and since you don't need to have necessarily have a have a display for that, so I'll, I'll try and get that done this week and see if it works. And then for fun, I uh, finally took the big step and got myself a 3D printer and uh, got my my first my first test print underway. <laughs> and uh, so all of my spare time for the next six months is committed. <laughs> awesome, looks cool, That's Jerry. Fun. Yep, thanks. All right, next up is Katni. At least Jerry understands <laughs> the loss of time that comes with a 3D printer. <laughs> All right, so I scrambled this together at the last minute and actually it ended up being huge. So 
Last week, I uh, updated the PCF 8235 and the DS3231 guides to include the STEM QT versions. Normally, we replace products with the STEM QT versions, but in this case, the originals are um, super still used by folks. Um, so they're new products, and the guides are written to include both, not to have one be a replacement. Um, so that's what's going on there. Um, we will eventually suggest folks start using the STEMA QT version, but uh, that'll be a slow change. Those are both real-time clocks, by the way. So there are now STEMA QT real-time clocks, which are super convenient, for example, adding to your macro pad. Um, so I did some significant template cleanup involving moving code around to be bundle fly compatible. Also, so it generates the dynamic CircuitPy content screenshot images. Um, updated some of the templates to use the dynamic images. Updated all the related links to the moved code. Updated examples to use Rainbow IO, et cetera. So it's a single example in the template instead of a separate example for every guy using the template. Um, then I finalized the code side of my MacroPad shortcuts example, but I'm still thinking about what I want the shortcuts to be specifically. I am open to suggestions. It is a GitHub text expander setup. Uh, where co it's common phrases used on GitHub, such as the LGTM key sends looks good to me, and the TFYC key sends thanks for your contribution. Uh, what common phrases do you send in GitHub issues and PRs? Uh, let me know if you have any that um, are common to you or things that you see a lot uh, that you think would be useful. I created a PR to the Learning System Guides repository, renaming all instances of main.py to code.py to prepare for updating the associated guides. The PR is not yet merged as it will break over 30 guides and I'm waiting until I have Dylan's help to update the guides once we merge the PR. Um, and then I hosted a CircuitPython day chat with Katni, Jeff and Dan on Friday. We went through the full two hours because of all the amazing participation by the community, asking questions and so on. And thanks again to Bruce for the assistance with tracking the various chat avenues. This week, um, I ordered up the MCP9601 so I can do the guide for that. It's very similar to the old version, but not similar enough to be included in the existing guide, so it'll get a new guide. Uh, depending on um, Dylan's availability, uh, possibly do that main.py to code.py rename and learn. Um, otherwise, it's, no, it's not a rush. Uh, the PR is in, it's, it's fine uh, whenever we're ready to do it. Um, continue to think about what I want my MacroPad project shortcuts to be, uh, and eventually the plan is to do a guide on that one. Um, I'm going to potentially do a NeoKey Trinky guide specifically for sending timestamps from OBS into a document for keeping timestamps in notes during live streams um, or recordings. Uh, and then various miscellaneous, this is where it sort of petered out because the meeting started and I needed to get back to uh, earlier in the notes, um, and then more template stuff. Uh, once I get through all of that and or run out of other things to do. Um, and that's where I'm at. Awesome. Thank you, Katni. All right. Next up is Maker Melissa. Hello. So last week I was out sick much of the week. Uh, fortunately, it wasn't COVID, but I still felt awful. Um, I worked on the macro pad guide and finished up some code and, um, Started actually, I finished up my coding on that and started writing up the guide. Uh, this week I need to finish up my guide and possibly start another one. Uh, and other stuff is I'm moving all my stuff into a new office to make room in my home and not having to constantly reconfigure everything. And that's it. That's exciting. Thanks. I think that's something I'm going to do at some point too. Yeah, it's like. You realize it's like, oh, uh, it's kind of cramped in here. And if you're trying to do multiple things in here, you have to reconfigure everything. Right. Yup. That's cool, though. All right. Uh, thanks, Melissa. And if you have cycles, please let me know, because I'd love your help with the code.circuitpython.org. OK, yeah. Um, actually, I might have cycles after this guide's finished up. Okay, yeah, just uh, let me know. I'd, I'd love to see some more work done on that, but you have the skills that I do not have. <laughs> uh, thanks. Uh, okay, thanks, Melissa. And that's it for status updates. Lastly, we have In the Weeds. Uh, in the Weeds is a section where we just talk about kind of whatever is on our minds. Um, typically, we have folks uh, drop notes in the In the Weeds section, um, and we do have one topic here, so... Uh, hopefully, Warrior of Wire is ready to talk uh, in the weeds here. 
Yeah, so uh, Katni requested in the chat um, kind of a, a status update on Vector.io. Um, so there are breaking changes with the API in Vector.io um, that I'm hoping to get in for 7.0, uh, the 7.0 release of CircuitPython. Um, they are uh, simplifications. So um, now, uh, now you can just like add rectangles and circles and polygons uh, directly to your display groups instead of um, having to like proxy them through a vector shape. Um, that that doesn't exist anymore. Um, mm -hmm. You can just declare a rectangle of whatever size and whatever color and just like throw it into your display group. Um, there are a just litany of issues that are fixed in the pull request that's out in Vector.io. Um, it should be a lot more uh, user-friendly and uh, actually work like the rest of uh, Display.io with, with these changes. So um, I would recommend that any integration with Vector.io be done against the the, the pull request version um, because it like correctly handles things like display rotation if you yeah. if you install the screen um you know uh, rotated 90 degrees like a lot of my projects are um yeah uh but uh, as as far as the pr goes like it uh it passes all the uh, ci tests and everything um it's just awaiting uh final sign off and uh, getting ship uh, i think foamy guy uh tested it as well um so um, there's confirmation from at least two people that it, that it works on uh, Circuit Python devices. Okay, so uh, go ahead, Scott. If I mean, if you want me to test it as well, I can. Otherwise, I, I, it seems like it might be ready to go. Sounds good to me. Okay, I'll handle that then. Um, and yeah, the rotation is how I found it. I I was absolutely convinced that. Vector IO didn't work <laughs> like I thought it should, and it was the rotation problem. It was not Vector IO did work exactly like I like I managed to figure out. It's just that the rotation mm -hmm. didn't work, mm -hmm. um, and this project has the macro pad rotated ninety degrees. So, right. Well, Warrior um, Wire, thank you for jumping back into this. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's the way it's the way it should have been all along. Um, so, yeah, thank you for your patience. Absolutely. Um, so I will uh, handle getting that merge then. Um, and then that will be in the next uh, CircuitPython 7 release. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for the update. This is much clearer. Um, it was hard to follow the whole conversation, obviously. Yeah, um, there, there was quite a bit, yeah. Yeah, so, so this, this, was, this was excellent. Thank you very much for taking the time to explain, and we'll get that taken care of. Cool, thanks. That's all I have. Awesome. And that's it for In the Weeds. So now I will wrap us up. Uh, this has been the CircuitPython Weekly Meeting for August 9th, 2021. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of this doc that tells me what to say. <laughs> uh, thank you to everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter, which you can sign up by going to adafruitdaily.com and check the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter box there. It is a separate site because it is a separate list from the adafruit.com stuff, so it's just for the newsletters. That's all you'll get by signing up here. Um, and the next meeting will be... Pull up my calendar. Uh, next Monday, the 16th, at our normal time, which is uh, 2 p.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Uh, wait, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Um, <laughs> that's what I get for talking and switching browser tabs at the same time. Um, this meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord server, which everyone can join by going to the URL adafru.it slash discord. Uh, to be notified about the meeting and speak in the meeting, uh, you can ask to be added to the at CircuitPythonistas role on Discord. And uh, with that, we hope to see you all next week. Thanks for thanks to everybody for taking the time. I uh, hope you have a great week, and we'll see you on the Discord. Thanks, everyone.